Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we've got a good topic, a timely topic. We're gonna to talk about when to sow your seeds for spring. Well, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's fall, the fall crops are doing really well. I've been eating out of my garden, everything is wonderful. But it's time to start thinking about spring planting, spring sowing. In my area, Zone 9A, spring sowing comes in just a couple of weeks. I'm going to sow my seeds indoors and have them ready to come out here into the garden uh, by our last frost date, which is around March. How do you determine these things? How do you figure out when to start seeds, when to plant seeds in the ground, when to put your starts out into the ground? That's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing we need to know is our average last frost date for spring planting. We need to know when it's safe to put our little seedlings out. And then the whole key to timing is to count backwards a number of weeks and that time will, uh, that, that will be the time where we plant seeds. Now that's always the question was how long do I count back? Um, some people will just count back six weeks and start all their seeds at that six week mark. So if my average last frost date is, is uh, uh, March the 1st, well, I'll count back six weeks and I'll be somewhere in middle to the end of February when I start all my seeds. But some seeds require a little more time than six weeks. Some seeds require a lot of time. How do we know where on our calendar to mark our sowing dates? All these seeds and all of these seeds, these are the ones that I'm currently interested in out of my collection. You got to know when to plant them. And so on the back of the seed packet, that's where all your good information is going to be. Any reputable seed company is going to put a lot of information about how to sow their seeds on the back. This one from Johnny's has a ton of info on it. This is a good seed company. They put a lot of info on the back of their seed packet. This one from uh, Bentley Seeds, it's more tailored to uh, the commercial uh, big box stores. There's not a lot of information on the back of here, but there's just enough to know when to sow them. Um, if you look at most of Baker Creek seeds these days, they give you a lot of information. Some of it's pretty generic, but along the top here, they give you more info about the seeds, as in when it sprouts, what's the ideal temperatures, the seed depth of spacing, whether it's frost hardy and how much sun it needs. All of this is good information. Uh, this is another good company, Kitasawa Seed Company. I'm impressed with their information they put on the back. Plus, if you go on their website, they give you a whole lot of cultivation tips for every single variety they share. And so this one gives you germination temperatures. That helps you understand when to plant them if you're going to plant them outdoors. It tells you, you know, how long it is to maturity, uh, when to put them in the ground, when to start them early, and things like that. So your seed packet is a very good source of very important information that will help you time your crops. So let's take a look at these seed packets. We've got one that's five to six weeks. We've got this one three to four weeks. We've got this one that says eight to 12 weeks. And we have this one here, this watermelon, that says, oh, about four weeks. So just right there in these four packets is a range of dates for sowing your seeds. And so you'll want to know exactly what's going on on your seed packets. And every seed packet will have different instructions on there to tell you when to plant. Okay, so let's talk about how to arrange your calendar. Looking on my uh, Google Calendar, uh, you can see here where my cursor is that uh, this is my average last frost date. This is March the 1st. This is the date where everything that I have needs to be in the ground for spring most everything. But what we want to do now is to count back according to our seed packets. And so I'm going to go back to February and you can see that my average last frost date still shows up here. So I'll count one, two, three, four weeks back. Now, any plants that I have that the seed packet says start four weeks before your average last frost date, I'll start those on February the 1st. And you could continue to count back from February the 1st so that's five weeks, six weeks. So here, January 18th is when I would start my seeds that are, are requiring six weeks before my average last frost date. And I continue to count back, there's eight weeks right there. And so this is how you can plan your calendar. Let's say you've got some seeds that 
you need in your spring garden, but like that one we looked at requires a 12 week, um, you know, head start. We're going back to December here and that's, that's December 7th. I should have had those in the ground on, uh, in, in my trays and started on December 7th because wow, it's already December 29th. So it's a little late to start those, but that's what you do. You go to your average last frost date and you simply count back how many weeks your seed packet tells you. And that's when to start your seeds indoors in your seed trays under lights. We're talking about starting seeds so that you can grow your seedlings up and get a head start on the growing season. Um, but what about sowing seeds in the ground itself? When you start seeds in the ground and you direct sow, your average last frost date is still the important date to keep in mind. Because if you put seeds in the ground before your average last frost date and those seeds are not frost hardy, uh, sometimes, you know, you'll have a dieback. Your plants will come up if you got a warm week and then the next week, zap, you got frost, it'll kill them all off. Um, it's, it's an average target that you kind of have to, you, you kind of play with the weather and you got to be mindful of the weather. Uh, some seeds, especially on your seed packets, will tell you what temperature they like to germinate at. And so what you want to do is actually put your hand on your soil and see if it's warm or get a soil thermometer and and test the, the temperature of your soil. And you want to direct sow when the seed packet tells you the temperature. If the temperature needs to be 55 or you know, 65 degrees, then you don't want to sow right at your average last frost date because it's still kind of cold. You want to wait a few weeks. I've put cucumbers out here at my average last frost date and they just sat in the ground. They rotted away, we had to re-sow about four weeks later when the temperatures were up enough for those seeds to germinate. So that's one thing you've got to pay attention to. Put your hand on your soil and see if it's warm. If you're, if you're, we're talking about direct sowing in the garden, uh, your, your temperatures are what you want to look at. Your average last frost date is important, but the temperature of the soil, especially that top inch where you're putting your plants, uh, your seeds, that soil temperature is the most important thing. All of these fall crops were started with the average first frost date in mind. And all of these crops were put in at the, uh, the first week of October. Uh, most of them are winter hardy. And well, in that case, I can just put everything in at one time because I'm not, I'm not racing against uh, a short growing season. Most of this stuff will grow right through the winter and into the spring. But with spring planting, you really need to have uh, that average last frost date as your target. That's an average. We have to understand that some years are colder than other years. Some years are warm years. And if you have a warm year and it's looking like you've got a reliable forecast that it's going to be warm earlier, then you can start a couple weeks early and get a head start. And uh, well, this year I think it's going to be that way for me. I think. I hope. There is another consideration you need to uh, be aware of if you grow a fall or winter garden. Uh, and you grow year round, timing of your crops is going to be um, come into play when you're planting your crops. For example, this is my carrot bed, my beets, some radishes, and my cabbages here. And my cabbages will be harvested in plenty of time for my spring crops to go in. But my carrots down there, I'm going to keep my carrots uh, as long as possible, well into the spring. And probably some of these carrots could go all the way up to that March 1st date because, well, they're carrots. They grow and they're dense. And as I pull the mature ones, the ones that are not mature continue to grow. And so um, you have to plan your fall garden with their end dates in mind. And so I'll probably have to clear everything out of here because this is gonna be one big bed of tomatoes on this trellis system that I've built. And I have to have things out by March the 1st because that's when my tomatoes are going in. Now there's a possibility that you could intercrop. I could clear out the, uh, the sides of my carrots there and plant my tomatoes there and let the ones in the middle continue to grow. But um, yeah, you need to think about when your crops will mature. Phoebe, what do you got there? What are you eating? Huh? No, we don't eat grubs. Grub eating dog. So there we have it. That's how we time our seed starting for starting seeds early indoors. And I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, put them down there in the comment section. And really, thank you so much for watching our videos. I'm, I'm really humbled 
Um, if you haven't subscribed, I invite you to do that. We're looking to get 100,000 subscribers this spring when we get our, our regular spring boost. And uh, well, that would just make a, that would, be, that would be so awesome. Thank you so much. Happy gardening to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.